Hello, Shirley Adams with Program 7, Series 2 of The Sewing Connection. Setting in a sleeve really well can be a technique which separates the amateurs from the pros. If done poorly, it just looks dreadful, so let's learn how to do this beautifully. Let's examine three different sleeve patterns to see where the differences occur. It's all in the cap, size, and shape. Notice this first one here, for instance, and this is the standard sleeve. This is what they all are based on, and this is just the high set-in cap. This measures about an inch bigger than the arm's eye if it would be in a blouse. It, it measures about two inches, maybe, in a suit. Here is the same shape generally, but it's been widened right here at the top, and that's because it's going to have gathers, pleats, something. It's bigger, though, than the arm's eye, considerably such. And then this third one over here is going to be a dropped shouldered sleeve, and that's why it's so flat here, because the uh, shoulder point comes down to meet it. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of examples to see what that looks like then made up in patterns in fabric here. Uh, here's the jacket. This is the type of sleeve that we're looking at here, and it's a smooth sleeve, and this is the key, the fact that it's smooth. If yours ends up looking all ripply, then it's homemade looking and that's dreadful. We can't have that. So smooth is what I'm going to show you how to do in a little bit. Here's another one and this is in a blouse. And this one really is smooth when it's on an arm, but here in the, uh, on the hanger it may not look quite as smooth. But it's the same type thing in that it also is that high cap. No gathers in it, no tucks, nothing else. Now this one is the same shape, but here I'm going to show you something else in a little bit. Now this one is ultra suede and you can't get as much ease in the cap of that sleeve. It would pucker and it would not look nice, so we have to do something to it, and I'll show you what in a little bit. Then this is the other one that you see down here at the other end. This one is the dropped shouldered one, and that's because the uh, bodice comes down to meet the cap of the sleeve, so that's why it's so flat down there, because it's way down here, dropped shouldered. And uh, then what you see in the middle these are the big sleeves, and these usually are in blouses, sometimes in suits and coats, but usually in blouses. And you can get that fullness in in any of these three ways. You can, if you want to, put these little pin tucks in. This is done with a twin needle. Or another way you can do that is to put gathers in, as this sleeve has lots of gathers in the top. Or here's the same sleeve done a third way, and this is with pleats. So any of those ways, you're the designer when you sew, and so you can do it any way you want to. You, be, you do the, cho the choosing there. Now this one I put pleats in because it was kind of crisp. This one was very soft, so that's why it has gathers. That's the type of thing you think about when you make choices of that sort. Uh, if you would actually measure these caps of the sleeves and then measure the arm's eye and the arm's eye armhole, that just means the bodice front and the back, and that's where the sleeve is set in, that whole area. If you would actually measure that, in some uh, suits, this one, this high cap, would be about two inches bigger. That's a lot to ease in. But usually it's done in wools or in linens or some fabric like that that eases nicely, that isn't a problem. If, on the other hand, you have the suede, then, whoops, we can't ease in that much. Now, if this sleeve looks extremely small, this also just happens to be a European pattern, and it's one of the types that you add the seam allowances to because they aren't there. That's why it looks smaller. Um, this other one would measure, oh, anywhere from two, four, six, eight inches bigger than the sleeve cap to get all those extra gathers in. And then this drop-shouldered one down here at the end measures exactly the same as the arm's eye it's going to go in. And if it measures at all bigger, then you need perhaps to do a little correcting on that pattern before you actually set it in because it would really look bad if you had any gathers, if it would drop down your arm here and then suddenly you had gathers there. That does not look good. So anytime it's a dropped shoulder, it's always a smooth cap. So let's see how to set in that standard sleeve cap and to see where so many of you do go wrong because I hear that complaint constantly and I see that without you complaining about it. I can look at uh, sleeves and see that, whoops, we have a little bit of a problem here. So here's how you start. I have just a breakaway really. Uh, little bodice here, but there's the arm's eye that it's going to go in, and here's the sleeve that will go in there. And what you need to do first of all is, of course, put the sleeve together, sew it under the arm. And the only time you would not sew this uh, sleeve under the arm is if you were working with a small child's garment. Then you might sew it in flat and do this seam later. 
but with this one you're going to stay stitch first. And the reason to do this stay stitching is so that you get, and I'm going to put the uh, uh, stitches up a little bit bigger, make them a little bit longer. The reason you do this stay stitching is so that you can draw this up a little bit because it does measure larger than the sleeve that it's going into. So you put this uh, not right on the 5 8 inch line, but just a little bit inside it so that it will be in the seam allowance so it really doesn't ever have to be pulled out. So I'm going just barely inside the 5 8 line. And I'm doing this just from notch to notch. When I get around here the, uh, to the other notch, I will stop. And uh, don't cut the threads off short because you may need to draw those in after a while. Now you can see with just stitching it, it already bends a little bit, but I'm sure not enough. But we'll go ahead and start setting in the, in the uh, arm's eye and then see what needs to be done beyond this. Okay, the sleeve needs to be right side out and the arm's eye or the bodice inside out. So I'll do them like this. I'll put it in this way. And uh, there's always at the top of your sleeve some sort of a little mark. What I have here to mark it is this little notch. So with this little notch clipped in it, uh, this is going to then uh, uh, signify that this is the shoulder point and I need to pin it in right there. So I'll put a couple of pins in there because I want to pin that seam allowance in place on the shoulder and I don't want it to flip over and uh, get stitched down in the wrong way. And I'm trying to get no ease whatsoever in here because this is straight grain of fabric across there. If you look at it carefully, it's always straight grain. And you can't really ease in an area where the grain is straight. You only can ease in the bias area. So there's for starters. Then under the arm, I'm going to do the same thing. And there is no easing under the arm. So here I can just pin it in straight and do, of course, Pin it on the sleeve side so that you can uh, do all your work there. That's where all the, everything happens there. That's where the easing in happens because never do you ease in the arm's eye of the bodice. It's always the sleeve that you uh, work with. So this would be just be completely straight, completely flat until you get up to the notch. So that much of it I'll pin just perfectly flat. And then we'll take another look. We'll evaluate about that point to see what we're going to have to do beyond. So I'll do the other, the same, the front side of it. I've already done the back side. And this one also will come up to the notch. And then we have to look at the space that's left because in this space between the shoulder and between the notch, and as I hold it here, you can see that the darker blue, the arm's eye of the garment, is pulled tightly across here, and yet the sleeve has all this extra uh, in it. So that extra ease is what we're going to have to get into that cap. So we have to work a little bit with this, but not much. I think this is where uh, home sewers make the biggest mistake. They gather this up a lot. And you don't need a lot. You just need a little bit. Now, I'm working with some kind of strange fabrics here, perhaps. This is muslin. This is sheeting that I'm using, this light blue. And see how I'm just sort of easing it in a little bit. Had I made my stitches slightly larger, it would have been easier didn't go quite large enough there. But anyway, as I get this eased in and get it all pulled up and distributed equally, you'll notice that already it either will fit in completely at this point or else maybe I've already gone too far and maybe I have it eased in too much. No, it fits just right. Now what you can see out here at the edge is uh, still a tight uh, arm's eye on the darker blue and you can see a ripple on the light blue. But right here where the stitching line is, where it counts, this is what you'll see from the outside. Right there, I can feel with my fingers under it here that it fits just right and that it is pulling snugly across there and it's going to work out just fine. So I'll put a few pins in that to hold it. Now, possibly uh, you never stitch over pins. This is one place I either stitch over them if my machine, and my machine will permit me to do that. If yours doesn't, for goodness sakes, don't. Uh, if you can't stitch over them, then of course pull them out just before you get there. But you want this held in quite firmly, so I like to leave pins there if possible. So I'm going to put all these pins in, and I'll do the same thing with the back side. Now if you gather this in too much, that's when puckers show. And some people like to gather it all in and then put it in the ironing board and try to smooth it out. And sometimes you get yourself in worse trouble that way. So I don't know that that's too good an idea. Try this first. If you've been having troubles, see what you can do just by doing it the way I'm doing it today. And here again, I'm drawing this up 
until we can get some gathers distributed evenly all along the way here. And after I have these completely, or as evenly as I can possibly get them, then I'm going to try it out and see if this works out right by just curving it, cupping it over my hands like this. And then you can feel with your fingers here, I can feel this one's too tight. So I would guess that this is, it's the back of the sleeve I see. Okay. So I'll go ahead and put some pins in this. And then we'll be ready to sew this in. And you do not only your pinning, but also you do all your stitching with the uh, sleeve side on top so that you can control it, so that you can see what's going on, what's happening, not let anything go awry. And I'm going to move this a little bit. I'm going to just quickly move these pins around a little because this is pulling too much in back here. So sometimes it isn't necessarily your fault, realize. Sometimes it actually is the pattern. And this one seems to be a little bit funny. So instead of putting that notch right on the shoulder point where it was supposed to be, I'm going to see what will happen if I put it just slightly toward the back in order to distribute this fullness a little bit more realistically. This sometimes does happen, and there's no reason why you can't adjust it. What also uh, sometimes happens is that your arm doesn't hang quite uh, standardly the way the pattern manufacturers think it ought to hang. Maybe your arm hangs at your side a little bit forward or a little bit toward the back. And if this is the case, then uh, you may have to reset that sleeve in order to have it come out just right, in order to have it hang right. So I'm pulling a little bit more fullness out of the part that I put in first because it seemed too full. So uh, this, this could be in the pattern. Okay. Well, it doesn't take too terribly long to do the pins, and it's better to redo the pins now than to have to take out the sleeve and do it over again if it has puckers all over. Okay, now it feels good. Now it's going to work. I usually start right about uh, where the one notch is here, go all the way around the sleeve and end up at the other notch. What that means is this area that's likely to rip out under the arm is going to be double stitched. So you're safer that way and you won't have a problem with it ever ripping out. So I'll start right about where that notch is and go around under the sleeve and I'm doing it 5 eighths now. This is right on the seam line so you'll see as I stitch around that it slightly avoids my original stay stitching line. It wasn't on the same line. And stop wherever you need to and it's a good idea to stitch with the needle down position if you have that capability on your machine so that it does hold it there nicely as you readjust the fabric. And then I'll keep on going. And whenever I see I'm going to come to a little tuck of some sort, I'll stop and readjust that fabric again so that nothing nasty results here. And on around. Now, anytime you do come to something that looks like it might be a little pucker, it's a good place to stop and see what you can do about it. So I'm going to stitch until I find a place like that and then tell you what you can do to avoid that. And here I'm getting a little indication of a pucker. Okay, you can do something when you come to a place like that that's called off-grain stitching. Now remember, that's all bias area where I held all the, or where I gathered in the fullness, that's bias. And that means you can kind of pull it off-grain a little bit like this as you stitch across the area and then you can avoid a little ripple there, a little pucker. So remember that uh, uh, little trick in case you need to do that ever. I'm getting all the seam allowances back together up here again. I'm trying to keep this down out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm right up at the top of the sleeve, and as you do this at home, we're going to have a much easier time of it because you won't be leaning back so that people can see over your shoulder, so it'll be a whole lot easier for you. tucking that fabric out of the way. And now I'm all the way around. Now all I have to do is repeat under the arm so that uh, it would be double stitched there. Now, very often patterns tell you to stitch, oh, maybe a quarter inch away. 
I can't quite understand the logic here because if you have those two lines of stitching a quarter inch apart, if you should break the outer line, then it still looks like you have a seam that's ripped as you're wearing it. So I stitch on the same line both times. Therefore, it's not going to rip. It's really reinforced then if you do it twice in the same place. Okay, and we're around the underarm area twice. So we'll just cut that off and take a look at it as I take the pins out here. And hopefully we won't see a ripple anywhere. It should come out just right. And if it does not, I would definitely at this point uh, take out some of it. Not the whole thing, maybe. Maybe just part of it. But I would take out whatever needs to be taken out and redo it if there is a ripple anywhere so that you don't end up with a dreadful homemade look. Now, this doesn't look bad considering this is a really quite difficult fabric to use. And because of that, uh, you know, it didn't turn out badly at all. So, anyway, that's what a set in sleeve looks like and it's really that easy. There is nothing to it. So, if you've had trouble in the past, try this technique and see if you can do it a little more easily. Now, a, a set in sleeve that is similar but has gathers in it, you would do the very same way but it starts out like this. There are two lines of stitching there and one of them should be at about uh, a half inch and the other one should be at about three quarters of an inch. That's, that means they surround the stitching line. The actual stitching line is five eighths from the edge. So we have one gathering line on each side of it here. And in doing that, you can control those gathers very nicely as you set them in. You can distribute them and get them exactly where you want to and have everything work out to your liking before you stitch across the area. Now some patterns tell you to do this also for the smooth sleeves that I just did. I wouldn't advise that because if you try to put in a smooth sleeve with the two uh, rows of stitching, this is where I think you run into trouble and get the puckers and the little gathers. So at least try it this way and see if it doesn't work out nicely for you. Uh, these sleeves with the gathers are a lot easier to do perhaps because you don't have to worry about whether or not you have any pucker showing. Naturally they're supposed to show so it's not going to be a, a problem. After you have that, set in, that sleeve set in then, what you need to do with it is pull out the thread that does show and here I have one that shows so I would pull this out all the way so that nothing shows then. The other one that's still inside the seam allowance could stay in, it doesn't hurt at all. Uh, so anyway, this is the gathered sleeve and there is the set in sleeve that is just nice and smooth. But let me tell you about another problem. And this is the sleeve that you might do in the faux suede, the synthetic suede. And I'm afraid that you can't get that extra two inches of ease in all the time in the suede. In fact, you never can. It won't go in the suede. So if your pattern measure both on the stitching line this is, measure both your sleeve cap as well as the stitching line of your arm's eye around from notch to notch since that's the only place where you do any easing, but measure that on your pattern pieces and see what to expect. And if you would typically find that, whoops, I have too much in this ultra suede sleeve, then I'd trim a little bit of it off. What you want to have here is only in this 10 inches approximately from notch to notch, you want to have only one inch bigger in the sleeve than you have in the arm's eye. If it's anything beyond one inch larger, you're not going to put it in smoothly. It will have puckers. So if that's the case, measure that and you figure that, oh, let's see, I have perhaps uh, a quarter inch or a half inch too much that I'm not going to get in. Trim off just a little bit and measure it again. And here I'm going to trim just a little bit off the edge of this. And then that would move in, of course, the stitching line uh, so that it's five eighths. This would move it in a little bit. And when it's moved in slightly, that means then that it's going to measure a little bit less. And if it measures less, about an inch is all. And if it does measure less, then you can go ahead and ease it in. Now what really helps with ultra suede, I really don't use this on any other fabric, but I do use it on the synthetic suedes. What really helps is a product from the interfacing department. And very often you can't find it in stores, but look through their uh, sew-in interfacing. They're heavy ones, they're hair canvas types and kind of stretch them out and find something that you can stretch out on the bias and let go and it recovers. It doesn't stay stretched out. It might have any one of a whole big number of labels on it because there are a lot of commercial brands. But if you can't find any that recover, go home and go through a closet and find the ugliest tie in his closet and he'll never miss it. 
Maybe you better ask him if you can have it on second thought. But what's inside that tie is exactly what you need to ease in that ultra suede. So I need about 10 inches of it maybe. This tie, by the way, just bit the dust. It's not going to be worn again because without this interfacing in it, it's not going to look very nice and I didn't like it in the first place. So anyway, I have this nice piece of uh, this interfacing in here and see how it does stretch out and recover. Okay, this is the quality you want because what I'm going to do is cut this off so it's, oh, approximately uh, between an inch and a half, two inches wide. And I'm going to stitch this around on the wrong side of this suede cap. And I'm just going to stitch it from notch to notch around this top. And I'm going to stitch this so that it is uh, right inside the stitching line. That means uh, somewhere between a half inch and five eighths of an inch is where I'll stitch. And as I'm doing this stitching, I'm going to stretch this out once I get started. And do I have the needle in the down position? Yes, so that it'll hold. I'm going to pull this. I'm going to really stretch it out as I sew it on here. And every time I get to where my thumb is, I'll pull it out again and really stretch it out some more and do the same thing. And I'm going to do this all the way around to the other notch. Now this possibly could work for you in other fabrics too. I actually just do it in in the suede, but you might try it elsewhere if you have problems. Anything that's going to help you get that sleeve in looking professional, you want to try it. Okay, we're almost, no, nah, we aren't quite there. We're getting close to the other notch. And once we get all the way down there, then we'll hold up the sleeve to see what it looks like. And what I hope it looks like is slightly rounded so that the ease is all coming in there so that we can see it eased in. And indeed we can. See how those little puckers are? Now, um, even though it looks a little bit puckered here, remember that after it's in the arm's eye, the sleeve, the seam allowances always go back into the sleeve. So by the time they're all folded back in, you really won't see any puckers. Also, by the time there's an arm in there, it's going to look just terrific. So this is how it does look by pulling, by using that uh, shaper in there and, and easing it in. So this helps. This does a little bit better than if you had to do it without this product. So find some of it, either buy it or raid the closet and get some and see if you can't do your next suede project a little bit better with it. Okay, then we've eased some in here in this sleeve and we've eased some in in the plain sleeve. We've gathered some in the gathered sleeves. But what about those dropped shoulders? Well, here's that pattern over here, and not only do you see that dropped shoulder in this suede jacket that I have that's down here, just picture this suede jacket, though, and think how bad that would look if once you come down to this seam across here, think how bad that would look if that had gathers or any easing in it. It would really look funny. It would look like you were misshapen because it would come down here, and then it would bulge out again. So instead of uh, having any any ease in there whatsoever, we're going to uh, have it all perfectly smooth. So I'm going to go back here to the serger and I'm going to put in this sleeve. And what this is really is a t-shirt. T-shirts usually at this fashion period in time, they usually have dropped shoulders because, or extended shoulders at least. And uh, that's why the caps of the sleeves are always so flat and they should measure exactly the same. And also these flat sleeve caps you put in before you stitch the underarm area. You just uh, pin these, sew them in uh, with the, uh, here I'm gonna put one pin on the shoulder. And I'll put one down here for starters and then I can adjust the rest as I go along. But you want no ease on either side. It all needs to be perfectly smooth there. So t-shirts, of course, you can just do very quickly on the serger. So I'll get it under here and we'll do a little serging on it to see what it looks like. And the beauty of these knits is that you can just manipulate them, stretch them out a little bit if you need to. And we're off. 
And on this one, there won't be a pucker. It'll all come out just right. If I take the pin out, it'll look just fine. So smooth cap because it's a dropped shoulder. So we have no problems there at all. Now, after you have this finished, probably with this one, you'd press it. Usually when you press this uh, sleeve that's dropped, uh, shouldered here, you're going to press it with the seam allowances going up into the bodice. Uh, because if I just hold this here, maybe you can see why. If I press it the other way, it doesn't look as good. If it's going to be dropped, it looks better pressed up. However, uh, that isn't the way. The seam allowances always go in the sleeve if they are at the standard shoulder point. Do not press these, though. You'll make a mess of them. Now, even though I have this put in here, it still doesn't look really wonderful. It needs to have something else. You can see little ripples here in because of the ripples that are inside here. These are the ripples I'm seeing. We need to have something to cushion those so that it looks a little bit better. So we'll have to do something about that. But setting in a sleeve difficult? No. It's really rather simple and such a joy when they look wonderful. But this one that still looks rather flat and uh, not as good as it should, it lacks character, it's kind of flat. So join me next week and we're going to add a heading and shoulder pads to make these sleeves look really super.